Trig Cal. We are still in Section 5.3, learning about trig functions on the unit circle. First, learning target was to make sure you are um, understanding the unit circle's parts. You know all the degrees, the radians, and the ordered pairs. Make sure you memorize those. Secondly, we looked at the trig table and how to up do applications to the unit circle how we can take any angle around the unit circle and find the six basic trig ratios. We looked at those in the last video. Cosine is x, sine is y, tangent is sine divided by cosine, and then the three cosecant, secant, and cotangent, again, are the reciprocal identities. So this is the part that I need you to start writing in your notebook. We're going to do three different samples, um, totally different directions, so you can see the other types of problems they'll be asking. I think the first example I'm sharing with you is very, very similar to the one we did with the trig table, but we're going to go through the scenario again. So we're going to use the unit circle to find values of the six trig functions for the following angle 135. First, you make sure that you understand you are only allowed to do this if it's on the unit circle. 135 degrees is on that circle. It's actually in the second quadrant, and I've highlighted in blue, um, it's in the middle of the second quadrant. Um, the radian measure for that is 3 pi over 4. We are interested in knowing the ordered pair. Well, since this angle is in the second quadrant, we know that x is negative and the y is positive. The x value is negative radical 2 over 2, and the y value is the positive version. So this is the angle we will be using for this particular question. Okay, to find the value, we're going to do sine of 135 degrees. Again, I said this in the last video, but a quick reminder, make sure you are not using your calculator. If you typed in sine of 135 degrees, it would actually give you a messy decimal, um, and I want an exact value, so that means I need you to use the unit circle. Okay, so just clarify that. So the sine of 135 means to go to the, that degree, look at your order pair, and write down the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate is the square root of 2 over 2. Second, find the cosine of 135. Again, cosine is the x-coordinate of the ordered pair, and in this case, um, it's going to be a negative radical 2 over 2. Third, we're going to do the tangent of 135. Tangent's definition is sine divided by cosine, or y over x. We're going to take the y answer, which is radical 2 over 2, and we're going to divide that by the x answer, which is negative radical 2 over 2. Since these are the same values, um, makes this one easier, we don't really have to show work on this. We've got a positive divided by a negative. It's the same number, so the answer should just be negative 1. Fourth, we're going to find the cosecant of 135 degrees. The cosecant is the inverse of sine, so you already got your sine answer. Write the reciprocal, flip it upside down. Then I need you to rationalize, get that radical off the bottom. It's going to look like this, 2 square root of 2 divided by the square root of 4, which is 2. Um, the 2's are going to cancel for me, and so in this problem, my answer is just going to be radical 2. So there's my sine, cosine, tangent, and now we have cosecant. Next, we're going to do secant. Okay, 
Secant is the inverse of cosine, which is this answer. Again, remember always to put the negative on top. So it's going to be negative 2 divided by radical 2. And you're going to rationalize. So you're going to get negative 2 radical 2 over just 2. And the 2's are going to cancel for you nicely. And so now you're left with negative squared to 2. Five down, one to go. We're going to do cotangent. The cotangent of 135 is taking my tangent answer. And um, we can think of that like a fraction if you want to, but like flipping it upside down. But in either case, negative 1 divided by 1 or 1 divided by negative 1, same answer. So that one should have been easy there. Negative 1. So there are my six trig functions or ratios for a 135 degree angle around the unit circle. And that's much like what you did on your trig table. Okay, notice the next one. I have it labeled part four in our notes. Um, this one's asked a little bit differently. It's saying, um, showing you how to find values of the six trig functions for angle theta, but all I'm giving you is the points location. So how do we find the six trig functions if all the book gives us is an ordered pair? Well, first, we draw a picture. So point A is located at 5, negative 12. Um, if my x is positive and my y is negative, I am going to be in the fourth quadrant. I'm just going to estimate where I think 5, negative 12 is. We're just going to put it right there and label it point A. Now, obviously, that's not enough information to help me. So what you always do with a problem that looks like this is I need you to remember the following. You're first going to label it, or you're going to plot it, I should say. You're going to graph it. You're going to figure out what quadrant it's in. You're going to connect the point to the origin every single time. Connect your ordered pair to the origin. Next step, you're going to connect your point to the x-axis. Always the x-axis, never the y. Okay, because we want to put it back in standard position. So you connect your point to the origin, you connect it back to the x-axis, that's going to create a perpendicular, and that's also going to create a right triangle. I have said this in the past, but reminding you, angle theta is always centered about the origin, so you're going to put theta right there, across from point A. You're then going to use the ordered pair to help you with the distances on this triangle. We can't tell if it's a 30, 60, or a 45, 45 right now. Um, and so what we're going to do is take our x distance of 5 from the origin out to this location is 5 units. The y value is negative 12. You're going to go ahead and put negative 12 here. We are underneath the axis. Now, in geometry, we know that the length of this would be 12 but you do have to go with the sign just to show the reader what quadrant you're in. So it is important that you keep the sign here, which is different from, from geometry. <clears throat> okay, so we're looking for the sign of theta. Now what we've done is we've taken a problem that just gave us an ordered pair and we've created a right triangle. Because we have a right triangle and it's not a special one, in order to answer sine from theta's perspective, which is here, we need to know the opposite, but we also need to know the hypotenuse. And we don't know that right now. So we have to figure that out. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so we'll say 5 squared. plus negative 12 squared is equal to c squared. This one's going to be a 25. 
negative 12 times itself is 144. 25 plus 144 is 169. solve for C, you take the square root, um, C is going to be 13. The algebra is actually positive negative 13, but in, um, in these types of problems, even though it's underneath the x-axis, hypotenuses are always positive. So kind of make that mental note. Hypotenuse, you'll always use the positive. Now we have enough information to answer this question. So the sine of theta, if theta is centered at the origin, is going to be negative 12. Opposites, negative 12. Hypotenuse is 13. And so that's why it's very important that you keep the sign, because if not, you're going to miss several of these. And we do not want that to happen, so just be really careful. <clears throat> For the cosine, you're going to do adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 5 thirteenths. And for the tangent, Sakatoa, tangent is O over A, so opposite, negative 12, adjacent is 5. And from the past, I mean, if you're still having trouble with recognizing these, maybe you need to label your sides. That way you don't make a silly mistake. Nothing wrong with that. Make sure you're comfortable with those. And also, I meant to say this remark down here. The reason this did turn out to be 13 is this is a triple. 5, 12, 13. So those of us that are uh, studying error triples and error unit circle and all the things we're supposed to be studying, if you recognize that that was a triple, then this work was not necessary. You just make a comment. If you know it's a triple, just say triple and move on. Cosecant of that angle, theta, would be the inverse. That would be negative 13 over 12. Uh, the secant of theta would be 13 over 5. And the cotangent would be negative 5 over 12. And so again, when the problems in the book are asking me to find the six trig functions, but they don't give me one to start with, or they don't even give me an angle around the unit circle, all they give me is an ordered pair, then my first task is to draw a picture. You have to draw the picture. Don't keep it in your head. So you're going to find that location. You're going to label it if the book gives you a name for it. You're going to connect the point to the origin, connect it to the x-axis, create you a nice right triangle. You're always going to put theta at the center. You're then going to use the location that will repair x and y, fill it in your triangle. You're then going to use Pythagorean theorem to help you, or a triple, to find the third side. And then the question is easy. You connect it back to things you've already done in the past. So that's your game plan for that top. All right, part five. Part five is on, um, it's a different type of question. But it's asking you to uh, do this, a similar thing. Let me label this here. So we'll make this part five in our notes. And here's the question. Suppose theta has terminal side in quadrant three. And the sine of theta is equal to negative four fifths. Find the other five trig functions. Suppose theta has terminal side in quadrant three. Quadrant three. And the sine of theta is equal to negative 4 fifths. This is the information that's important. We need to find the other 5. Okay, so first thing we do is we draw a picture. This time I don't have a word pair, but I do have information to help me. So I know that this is always the initial side of any angle, but this one's telling me that the terminal side in is, uh, is, is in quadrant three. So I need you to draw a, or pick a point, and it can be random out here, somewhere in the third quadrant. Okay, we're gonna try to make this one look like the last one, even though it's worded differently. 
Suppose theta has terminal side in quadrant 3. You are to go to quadrant 3, pick a location, and then connect it back to the origin. Okay, and what I want you to notice, back to section 1 for a minute, that this angle, if I go counterclockwise, it's going to land right there. Okay, so it's going to be a positive angle. This is my terminal side. Um, I want you now to connect the point back to the x-axis to create a nice right triangle. You also remember to always put theta centered at the origin, the angle that's closest to the center. And then you use this information. It's telling me that the sine of theta is equal to negative 4 over 5. Because we're dealing with right triangle trig, we can go back to Sakatoa. Sine is opposite, so the opposite of this angle would be down here. And according to the number, it's negative 4. Now, I'm glad that's negative because I am going underneath the x-axis. So to me, that does make sense. Always check where you're putting the numbers and then um, ask yourself that question. It does make sense. And then the hypotenuse is 5. And we should recognize this is definitely a triple. It's 3, 4, 5. Okay. Now, my last, com uh, last um, example, my comment was always make sure your hypotenuse is positive. Well, the legs, it depends on the quadrant that you're in. So because I'm in quadrant 3, the x value is definitely negative. The x value is negative, the y value is negative. So I'm going to have to put negative 3 in for this side. If I forget the negative, I'll miss a lot of these answers. So it's super important that you pay attention to perspective, what quadrant you're in. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and write down the first one, um, but it was already given to me in the information. So the sine is definitely negative 4 fifths. We're moving on to find the other 5. The cosine of that angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. This is my adjacent sine. From theta, this is my opposite. And this is my hypotenuse. And some of us were getting those confused on the quiz. So we want to make sure we label the parts. The cosine is A over H. So its answer should be negative 3 over 5. Tangent. Well, the tangent of theta is O over A. O is negative 4, A is negative 3, negative 4 thirds, better known as positive 4 thirds. Next is cosecant. Cosecant is the inverse of sine. That's going to be negative 5 over 4. Secant comes next. Secant is the inverse of negative 3 fifths. That's going to be negative 5 thirds. And then last is cotangent. The cotangent of that angle can be found by doing the reciprocal of tangent. And that's going to be 3 fourths. Okay, so here are my Five answers. They gave me the sun. And that's how you show work for it. You gotta be good readers of directions as well. And also keep in mind we've done the problems where my example was turned out to be a triple, so it was easier. But just know that you can get anything. You might get radicals for the hypotenuse or for the sides. So um, just make sure you always simplify your radicals. Don't give me decimals. Um, everything we've learned in the past and we've used throughout the year um, still goes. Okay, so make sure you're sure you watch for that too.